we are given a mass m that is suspended from an elevator car initially car is at rest and mass is also at rest then the car starts going up with an acceleration w we need to find y as a function of time so relative to car its initial y is 0 and its initial velocity is also 0 we need to consider two cases in first case acceleration is constant and second it is alpha t so let's solve the first part that is pretty straightforward because acceleration is constant so we'll have a constant pseudo force so let's see the first method for the first part so originally the mass was hanging from the elevator and it is at rest now this spring will have some extension but we are not bothered about that right now now as the car starts to accelerate with respect to car we will have a pseudo force mw down so with respect to car initially the block was at rest then it will go to the extreme position and then it will come back to its original position and it will keep performing shm about its new mean position see original mean position was when the block was at rest and then the car starts to move so downward force mw starts to act and initially with respect to car again the block was at rest and now it just starts to oscillate now at new, new mean position we can say ka is equal to mw which gives a is equal to mw by k and also because it's performing shm and stiffness is k and mass of block is m omega for the shm is root k by m now why did not we write mg and original extension force in this equation so let's read a bit forces due to original extension and mg are already balanced so we did not show them in equation one as see originally equation one we should have written k into a plus x naught is equal to mw plus mg where x naught is the original extension but we know mg is equal to kx naught so these things will get cancelled and what we'll get is again ka is equal to mw see when what we are talking with respect to car initially the block is at rest so you can just forget about mg and original extension what is the new thing that has happened new thing is that the car starts to accelerate so the new force starts to act that is mw so with respect to car we only need to bother about that force and of course the new extension so whatever is the new extension that will be that we have to counter i mean that will be in the opposite counter direction so that's why at equilibrium we have written ka is equal to mw because we know kx naught and mg will get cancelled so just to reduce the variables that's all so this situation is similar to a system kept on horizontal table which then starts to accelerate so inside a lift inside a car we have a stationary block that is already at some extension that situation is similar to if you keep that system on a horizontal table with initial extension zero so in that case also in table case also if the table starts to accelerate with w you will have to write this equation so same thing here so anyway k is equal to mw a is equal to mw by k and omega naught is equal to root k by m it starts here where we are given to be y is equal to zero and t is equal to zero so let's assume y is in downward direction so you can see the in the phase diagram it starts to move like this this is the y which we need to find and that y is a minus a cos omega naught t a one minus cos omega naught t so put the value of a here and omega naught is root k by m and this will be our answer now let, let's see the mathematical way of arriving at the same answer method two so let's say it has moved down to a distance y from its original position so it will again have a force ky up and mw down now of course there will be two more force mg and ky naught and here also they will get cancelled so our net 
force in downward direction because we have taken downward as positive. So we can write m y double dot is equal to m w minus k y or d two y by d t square is equal to k by m y minus m w by k is equal to zero. So this is an equation of S H M where k by m is omega naught square, and this is the new mean position. So solution of this equation is y minus m w by k is equal to a sine omega naught t plus phi. So this is the general solution of this equation. We don't know what is phi and we don't know what is a. So a we know is the uh, the amplitude will be when the forces are balanced. So k a will be equal to m w and a will be m w by k. So a is m w by k. And second initial condition is at since it starts at the top at t is equal to zero y is equal to zero. So if you put at t is equal to zero y is equal to zero. And you put the value of a m w by k, you will see sine of phi is equal to minus one. That means phi is equal to three pi by two. You just put these values here with a is equal to m w by k, and you will see phi sh should be three pi by two. Or our equation is y is equal to m w by k one minus cos omega naught t, because sine of omega naught t plus three by pi by two is minus cos omega naught t. So this is the second way. Mathematical way of solving the first part of the problem. Now let's do the B part where W is time dependent and its value is alpha t, where alpha is a constant. So it doesn't matter what is the value of W. This equation is always true. This is simple. Force is equal to m a equation. So downward force is always m W minus k y, and M a is always m y double dot, so this equation is still true, even if w is alpha t. That means this equation is also true. But now we cannot say directly the solution will be this. If omega is time, if w is time dependent, we cannot say that. However, this is a special case where w is just alpha t. So if you take this whole thing as let's say x, so let's say y minus m w by k is x, and w is alpha t, and if you double differentiate that, you still get d two y by d t square. So you can write this equation as d two x by d t square plus k x by m is equal to zero, where x is y minus m w by k. So luckily, W is just given alpha t, so this solution will still be true, because when you double differentiate this quantity, you still get d two y by d t square. Once again, I'll explain. So you can take, so you have this equation, right? And we know solution of this equation, if W is a constant, is this. Now W is alpha t, but If you take this whole thing as x, so this part will become k x by m. And if you double differentiate x, so after single differentiation, this will become y dot minus m alpha by k. After double differentiation, this will become y double dot, which is same as this. Which means this equation can also be written as d two x by d t square plus k x by m is equal to zero. Of which the solution is definitely of this form. So even though W is time dependent, our solution is still same as this. Only thing is, instead of W, we'll write alpha t. So that's what I've written here. Since d two y by d t square is equal to d two y minus m alpha t by k by d t square. So after first differentiation, this t will disappear, and after second differentiation, this whole thing will become zero. So this will become d two y by d t square. So now our solution is this: y minus m alpha t by k is equal to a sine omega naught t plus phi. But here we knew what is uh, what was the amplitude because we knew where the mean position was. Here we don't know the value of a, and of course we have to recalculate what will be the phi. So let's again put our initial boundary conditions. That is, at t is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. 
So let's do that. So at t is equal to zero, this becomes sine phi. And at t is equal to zero, this also becomes zero. So y is equal to a sine phi and y is zero. So sine phi is zero. That means phi should be zero. Now we still don't know what is a. So for that we will differentiate it because we know another thing that initially its velocity is zero. So we differentiate it and we get y dot minus m alpha by k. So this t will disappear is equal to a omega naught cos omega naught t. Now we again put at t is equal to zero y dot is equal to zero. So when we do that, we will see a comes to be minus one by omega naught m alpha by k. So we know the value of a also. So our equation now becomes y minus m alpha t by k. So this is our original equation. So we are writing that again with the value of a, which we got from here. So y minus m alpha t by k is equal to minus m alpha by omega naught by k omega naught sine omega naught t. So this is our answer, but let's simplify a bit, write k by m as omega naught square and we'll get the answer to be this. So this is the final and correct answer. All right.